Hi, I'm Jenny, and this is Camp TV. Reporter Rowan has an exclusive in studio interview with AAATA CEO Matt Carpenter. Watch what we learned about the ride. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Camp TV. My name is Rowan and today I'm here with Matt from the Ann Arbor Area Transportation Authority, The Ride. How's your day going so far? It's going really wonderful. I'm glad to be here. Mm, that's nice. Uh, so, what is The Ride and what does it do? Sure. The Ride is the nickname of the Ann Arbor Area Transportation Authority and we've been the public transit provider in Ann Arbor and Ypsilanti for about the last 50 years. We run all of the public transit buses uh, back and forth uh, in both cities, as well as the paratransit buses called A-Ride that go door to door. Uh, how, long, well, how long has the ride been around? The ride was created by the residents of Ann Arbor in 1969. So this is actually our 50th anniversary this year. Mm. Uh, can you tell us more about the ride's history? Absolutely. So uh, we were created by uh, the citizens who were voting that they wanted a public transit agency that they were willing to pay for because private bus companies were going out of business. This was in the 1950s when everyone was buying their own cars yeah. for the first time. Uh, so the private bus companies went out of business and the local folks in town said we want to create our own public transit agency. So they voted in 1969 to do that. I think a few years later they voted uh, to pay uh, a lot more for it and we began to slowly grow over the years. We started with, I think, two routes and four little buses, and the buses <laughs> back then were actually vans, and really? because it was the 70s, they had this horrible paint job. It was purple <laughs> and orange. I cannot yeah. imagine that. Ask your parents about the 70s. They'll, <laughs> they'll tell you that that was kind of normal back then. Um, mm -hmm. And since then, we have grown. Uh, we began serving Ypsilanti in the mid-70s, mm -hmm. and since then, we've expanded into Ypsilanti Township, Superior Township, Pittsfield Township, and Sio Township. Mm -hmm. Today we have, you know, after starting with four buses, today we have about a hundred. Wow, that's a lot. Where's the ride located? Um, well, our headquarters building is on South Industrial Highway on the south side of Ann Arbor. Mm -hmm. We have a passenger terminal in downtown Ann Arbor called the Blake Transit Center. It's across from the library. In the city of Ypsilanti, we have something called the Ypsilanti Transit Center. It's another passenger terminal. Uh, that's on Pearl Street. And really, in a lot of ways, the ride is everywhere. We have buses that run throughout all of Ann Arbor and Ipsy and Ipsy Township. So anywhere you go, you might see one of our buses. That's cool. Um, what, did you, what do you do at the ride? Well, my title is uh, the Chief Executive Officer, or CEO, so I'm the leader. Uh, so uh, my job is to um, uh, help all of the staff uh, to be successful in their jobs and to help the Board of Directors uh, uh, give direction uh, to the organization. Mm -hmm. uh, what did you study in school and how did you train for, the, for your job? Let's see, um, my favorite subjects in school were history. Uh, not, definitely not math. Um, I went to college and got a degree in political science and I really liked that because politics mm -hmm. is really helpful because I frequently will talk to the mayor of Ann Arbor or mm -hmm. the mayor of Ypsilanti in Ypsilanti Township, it's called the Township Supervisor. Mm -hmm. I'll talk to their, town ca their councils their elected governments as well. So mm -hmm. understanding politics really helps me understand where those folks are coming yeah. from. Uh, I was lucky enough here in Ann Arbor, I went to graduate school at the North Campus, U of M North Campus, mm -hmm. for uh, a master's degree in urban planning, uh, mm -hmm. which is really kind of where I got into transportation and mass transit. Well, uh, how did you become the CEO? Uh, there was a bunch of us and we all drew straws. 
<laughs> no. Um, I was interviewed for the job. Okay. So there have been about five or six people who've held this job before me. Mm -hmm. And once in a while, some of them will retire or get another job. Mm -hmm. And then it's up to the board of directors who are appointed uh, uh, volunteers, residents in the community. One of their biggest jobs is to pick the new CEO. So back in 2015, uh, this job was open because my predecessor had uh, moved on to another job. Mm -hmm. And the, the board put out an advertisement and said, who wants to be the next CEO? Mm -hmm. And I put my name out and I said, I'd like to do that. And they interviewed me uh, in probably early 2015. Mm -hmm. And some of that interview is public. If, if people want to yeah. go look at the Ann Arbor News on live, the M Live thing, you can still look at my name and, and uh, the ride and you'll see uh, what that was like back then. Um, I guess they liked what I said in the interview because mm -hmm. they offered me the job and I said I'd love to have that job, thank you. And then I moved here and started in June of 2015. Uh, what's it like being a CEO? Well, um, it's really rewarding because you get to help make a difference uh, in the community. Mm -hmm. You get to help um, the customers who are riding the buses. You get to help the staff who are trying to help the customers. Mm -hmm. uh, you get to make sure they have the resources they need, the tools and the money and the paper clips mm -hmm. that they need uh, to get things done. Mm -hmm. uh, and you get, I get to help the board of directors uh, decide where they think the organization should be headed in the future. Um, so really it's, it's a job that if other people are successful, like mm -hmm. the staff yeah. and the board, then I think I've done my job pretty well. That's great. Uh, what's the best part of your job? Mm. The best part of my job is probably talking to bus riders from time to mm -hmm. time and hearing about how, how much of a difference the service makes uh, to them in their lives that they can get to work or to school uh, mm -hmm. uh, quickly and efficiently and on time. I think that's really nice. Yeah. Uh, what other jobs do you offer at the ride? We have lots of different jobs at the ride. If you want to work for us, we like to hire people who like to work on vehicles. So we have a lot of mechanics. We have people who clean the buses. We have people who fuel the buses, uh, fix the engines, fix the brakes. We have a lot of bus drivers. We call them motor coach operators. Mm -hmm. And so we have a lot of people who do that. We have dispatchers who uh, tell the bus drivers where to go and when to show up. We have um, accountants and financial people to help keep the money in order. We have planners to help decide what we're gonna do a year from now or mm -hmm. 10 years from now. Um, we have communication specialists who know how to help us communicate and talk to the community. We have all sorts of people in all sorts of jobs, whether they be professional jobs or, uh, well, they're all professional, whether they be mm -hmm. sort of office jobs or jobs that are out in the field. So there's a variety. There's a wide variety of jobs. Um, what, how many people work at the ride? We have about 300 individuals who work at the ride. That's a lot. I know. Uh, why should people support the ride? We provide a really valuable service to the community. Uh, there are a lot of folks in the community maybe who can't use their own car. Mm -hmm. Kids, for example, who might want to get around town without their parents. But also seniors mm -hmm. who maybe don't want to drive anymore, yeah. persons with disabilities, or people with low incomes who can't afford to drive. So we provide an opportunity for them to still have independence and get around and really participate in society to hold a job, to go to school, uh, to buy groceries. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but beyond that, we also provide an alternative for people who maybe do have a car, but they don't want to drive it so much. Yeah. Uh, if you work downtown, we can get you from any part of Ann Arbor or Ypsilanti to your downtown pretty fast, and you don't have to pay for parking. So we can provide a pretty good alternative uh, to the automobile as well. Wow. Uh, uh, what advice would you give to students? Find a job you love and you'll never work a day in your life. It was something my dad told me a long time ago. So when you're thinking about what it is you want to do when you grow up, 
uh, think about what it is you really enjoy doing. Okay. Uh, how can people learn more about the ride? Well, you can visit our website, which is theride.org, and we have mm -hmm. a bunch of information on there about the services we provide. You can plan your trip to get to school or to the park or the pool. Mm -hmm. Summer is a good time for the pool. Uh, you can read about uh, our leadership and our board of directors. You can look at some of the plans that we're making uh, and learn a lot about public transit services in Ann Arbor yeah. and Ypsilanti. Uh, so I have a couple of fun questions. Uh, what's your favorite movie genre? My favorite movie genre, probably science fiction. Reasons why? So I like Star Trek and Star Wars. I know uh, some people got to yeah. pick one. I like them both. Uh, I like the idea of, you know, there's a future out there mm -hmm. that's, uh, you know, really cool. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I, I like I like science fiction movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like Star Wars a lot. Uh, do you have any pets? <sighs> Not right now. Well, I'm taking care of my mother-in-law's dog. Oh. She's a poodle. My mother, not my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law is not a poodle. Um, <laughs> uh, my mother-in-law is in France. Oh. She left the poodle with us, so we're taking care of Allie the poodle <laughs> for a couple of weeks until uh, my mother-in-law gets back. Um, uh, but otherwise, I had a cat oh. for 16 years, and she passed away six months ago, and we were all really sad. Mm -hmm. um, she, but she was a really good cat. I have two birds, and they're very annoying. Are they loud? Yeah. Birds are loud. Yeah, definitely. Make a mess. I'm afraid of them. You should be. They bite. <laughs> what is your favorite place in Ann Arbor? Gosh, there are so many cool places in Ann Arbor. I love uh, the Ohak Pool on the north side. My kids really enjoy playing in the pool in the summertime. Mm -hmm. um, we like Zingerman's. Mm. Go there for lunch sometimes. Um, but I really like just sort of driving around and exploring it. I find a lot mm -hmm. of neat stuff and just cool old houses and buildings. I yeah. like to walk around campus sometimes and see what's going on there. Downtown's pretty neat. Um, yeah, there's a lot of good places in Ann Arbor. Well, that's all the time we have on this episode of Camp TV. I want to thank uh, Matt for coming on this show, and I'm Rowan, and we gotta go, so bye. Fantastic interview, Rowan. You did an amazing job. Coming up next, reporter Grace will be getting to know Mark, Candace, and Jim. Let's take a look at what she discovered about the ride. Hello and welcome to Camp TV. I'm Grace and I'm going to be interviewing Mark. So what do you do for your job? Um, I repair the buses, uh, fix the brakes, AC, whatever the bus needs, we all we all here fix the bus completely. How many buses do you work on a night? Um, there's usually anywhere from 10 to 12 buses in here, and then we we repair them and then we get them out. What are some things that you like to do in your spare time? Oh, um, I snowmobile. Uh, I go up to the cottage, get on the wave runners, the uh, pontoon boat, and take care of my grandkids. What's the best part of your job? Everything. I enjoy working here. It's a very good job to have. Um, I'm on a bus currently that is having the floors remodeled and I'm here with Candace and I'm going to ask her a few questions. The first question is how long have you worked at the ride? Um, I've been here for nine months. How many people do you manage? I have 42 employees that report to me. What do you like to do in your free time? I do a lot of woodworking. I tinker around with other mechanic stuff, really anything that isn't work. What's the best part of your job? Uh, 
The best part of my job, I think, for me is, is leading other people, helping other people be successful and helping them reach the goals that they set for themselves. Okay, so where are we right now? So right now we're in the tire room. This is where we receive and we actually used to mount our tires. How many tires do you replace a year? We replace a full set of tires on every single bus at least once a year, so that it's about 600 tires. So I'm here with Jim in the electrical room. How long have you been? 18 years now. This is a lot of stuff, and how do you manage all of it? Uh, we started early, very early in the morning, four o'clock in the morning. We're here, uh, or at least I'm I'm here at four o'clock in the morning, and I managed to uh, do an inspection on uh, on at least. Uh, nearly 100% of the entire fleet that's out there. The destination signs, uh, the revenue system, which is the uh, what we call the fare box, and all the video systems that we have on the bus. Thank you, Jim. Okay, well thank you very much for coming out. Thanks, Grace. Um, next, we have reporter Aria interviewing Bern, Paul, and Adam as we learn about the rights, transportation, and how it works. Take a look at what we explore. Hi, my name is Arya Burton Weissman. I'm here with Vern, who is a driver here at the ride. So, what makes a good bus driver? Okay, have good driving skills, good customer service skills, be very communicative, be able to talk to people and stuff like that. Common challenges that a bus driver has to face every day. We have traffic, bicycle riders, short ferry boxes, and stuff. Just little stuff, you know. The biggest thing is traffic. Traffic could be bad. How many people would you say board your bus every day? Well, it kind of varies depending on the route that you're doing. For instance, if I was doing like a busy route, it could be packed from the front to the back. Uh, or if I was doing like a hospital route or something like that, where you might get just a few people on there. So it kind of varies with the route that you drive. So now we're back interviewing Paul. Who is the transportation supervisor here at the ride? So how long have you worked at the ride? I've worked at the ride for uh, almost 13 years now. I spent the first five and a half as a bus driver and the last six and a half as a supervisor. So how many people do you supervise? So on any given day, we have about 80 drivers on shift during our peak service times. We have a total of 180 drivers. So sometimes those drivers will call in. So you could interact with anywhere up to 180 people in a day. And what does your department do? We're the ones who actually get the buses out on the road and get them moving around. You know, there's lots of different departments here. They all have different responsibilities. When it comes to getting the buses out on the road and making sure the drivers have the tools that they need to do their job, um, that's what we do in the transportation supervisor. Well, thank you so much for that. This is a demonstration of our new quantum wheelchair securement device. This device has many features. It's safer than our normal hookups for riders because now if the bus were to be involved in an accident, the pressures to go forward is all taken up by the back of the wheelchair. This new securement device also allows wheelchair users a level of autonomy that wasn't there before. It allows them to keep some of their privacy too as the hooks, there isn't a driver reaching around them to hook them up. The driver then has to confirm that the wheelchair is secured and once they've done that, they are safe to go on their ride. Adam, who works in the control room. So, what is it like to work in here? It's kind of a high stress environment. So you have to kind of be on your toes all the time. We handle all the communications for the company, as well as try to make sure everybody's on time. A good experience for our customers. Cool. And what, do you need any type of training to work here? Was a lot of us are former dispatchers. Some of us have been in high pressure situations before. Paul himself was in, in the medical field. Uh, I've also been a 911 dispatcher at one point. So a lot of our dispatchers have that type of kind of cross training there. Cool. 
Do you have anything to add on? Yeah, the majority of us here are former bus drivers, so a lot of us are familiar with the system and familiar with how things work here. Cool. Thank you so much. Awesome job, Aria. That's all the time we have for this year's Camp TV production. To view, to view more programs like this, visit a2gov.org backslash ctn. Thanks for watching, and I'm your host, Jenny.